Gojo's return and revival is trending all over the internet because Gege has drawn new art for volume 26 with it actually showing the potential resurrection of Gojo. And not only that, in JJK chapter 225 we got new information that may actually imply that Gojo is not only alive but will actually come back to fight Ryom and Sukuna and it may have already given us an explanation on how he's already done so beside the fact that Gege's new art is taking the internet by storm with it showing, as you can see, Gojo potentially coming back to life. Let us talk about this with maximum copium because as a wise man once said, as long as there is hope, there is cope. And my friends, there is a lot of cope this video. So be sure to leave a like, it helps out a ton, thank you. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for a ton of consistent and quality JJK content just like this video. Less than 10% of people who actually watch my videos are subscribed, so if you love JJK, I can assure you, you will not regret subscribing. And of course, thanks to the special group members of the channel. Alright, let's get right into this. So why is Gojo trending all over the internet and why is everyone saying he is returning? What is the spread of copium everywhere? But there is actually some good evidence for it three pieces of evidence in particular that suggest Gojo may be alive. Well, it all has to do with the new volume 26 art that Gege actually dropped of Gojo Satoru. So in this art, as you can see, it looks like Gojo is either doing two things, and I'll explain both of them. The first is the absolute max copium answer where Gojo is waking up from the death of where he was lying before, and he's just, you know, waking up from death. He's revived. And what makes this even more imminent is that you can see his eyes actually glow, and there's a massive highlight around his one eye that we see. As you can see on the screen, it looks exactly exactly, and I mean exactly like he does when he was actually lying down when he was cut in half. It is so eerily similar to how he looked. I mean, usually when he's standing still, you can see his hair's down or his hair's flowing in a certain way. It is literally in the exact same position as when he was cut down by Sukuna. Everything is the exact same, so it's just massive copium, but it does look so similar to how he was when he was lying down, and it looks like he is waking up with his eye shining, with there being a massive emphasis on his eye, as you can see there's actually impact lines around it, highlighting it. But what is option two? And this is the more boring option, which is more likely I'll say. But for the sake of the video, we're not going to say it's true, you know, because we want to cope. It's possible that this was actually Gojo's reaction to actually him getting cut. So he was seeing the cut. He was actually able to, with his eyes, observe that it was cutting the world. But unfortunately, it was just too late and it cut him. And what we're seeing is perhaps the cut just about to him or the cut after it's him. But I want to say because his eye is glowing and there's that sharp impact around it, it may be him observing the actual slash cutting the world. And that's what he may be seeing. I'm not going to lie. It's very possible possible that it's just that and everything else that's coming out of this video is Max Cope. But wait, it's possible that it's him waking up again because it looks so similar to him when he's actually lying down. But there's more evidence. All right, let me actually put the extra piece of evidence on why this may be Gojo waking up. And also, I want to remind you, yes, I know I'm coping. Yes, I know I'm huffing on the copium right now. I'll touch upon the whole narrative and writing impacts of if Gojo is alive on the second half of the video. So don't worry about that yet. For now, I'll just be talking about the evidence for Gojo, you know, actually being alive. So what is this other sacred, incredible piece of evidence that I have that's actually suggesting that Gojo may be alive and well it's something that we've already known for quite a while but it's just been highlighted heavily with the new chapter 255. Now allow me to actually quote the good narrator. In order to activate the broad targeting world separating dismantle, so the world cutting slash, the same hand sign used for Malevolent Shrine, and Maten was required. However, with only one arm remaining prior to his transformation, which if you don't remember one of his arms was actually lost by the Hollow Purple, Sukuna was forced to impose a binding vow to the activation conditions for all preceding uses of the move in order to cut Gojo Satoru. Presently, on top of both the Enma 10 hand sign and chance being required, the trajectory of the technique must be specified via his palm. So we know this is true because even when he was using it against Yuta, he needed to free both of his hands from Riko off screen, and we actually get to see him specifically point his palm at Yuta as he was firing the world ending slash. So it finally makes sense how Yuta was hit by a world ending slash and it cut through Yuta, but for some reason it didn't cut Yuji in half, so now we know the answer against Yuji. It wasn't the world ending slash, but still a tough slash regardless. Likely just buffed by the chance, but not the actual world ending one because it wasn't pointing at. Okay, but what does this have to do with Gojo's revival? Well, remember, binding vows are insanely broken. I mean, we've seen it be used so many times by so many high-level characters. A big highlight actually being Hakari, who saved his own life by making a binding vow by sacrificing one of his hands and arms to actually let him survive and tank the Kashimo explosion. And binding vows, in case you aren't aware, are completely, for some reason, aware of the meta aspects of sorcerers. And not only that, but the meta aspects of context for some reason. Now, what does this mean? Well, let's go back to Hakari. The same example. The fact that Hakari needs both of his hands to actually use a domain expansion, him actually sacrificing one of his hands was basically him removing the ability to cast a domain expansion. So normally just sacrificing your arm would already give you a strong binding vow, but the context that now Hakari can't actually go into his jackpot because now he can't cast domain expansion because one of his hands is gone, that actually made his binding vow way stronger, strengthening it to another level. So in that sense, context does matter. And one other thing that matters is it does actually matter on how much you're sacrificing. 
amazing. And this is actually a reference to Hunter x Hunter. We know the more potential you have and the more that you're actually sacrificing because you're a stronger character and you have a lot more to offer, the stronger your binding vow would be. We've seen this with Golden Hunter x Hunter, with him actually giving away all of his life to awaken his potential because he's someone who's a 1 in 10 million Nen user. That actually made him insanely godlike when, you know, he actually made that contract to himself. And we do know that Gege is heavily, and I mean heavily inspired from Hunter x Hunter, and Gege has kept that no secret, obviously in the way that he's writing the story, with there being so many similarities, not just in the actual combat system and how the universe actually works, but even with the art style where he has, on so many occasions, taken direct references from Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter. I mean, he's done it so many times, and he's also admitted that he does that because he loves Hunter x Hunter, and who doesn't? Hunter x Hunter's such a great series. It's awesome that Gege loves it as well, and he's paying homage to it. But back to the main point, if someone strong as Hikari is sacrificing his arm, it's going to make the Binding Vow stronger. It's why when Miwa actually made that Binding Vow to sacrifice her being able to use a katana, it didn't do anything because this is coming from a character who, I really hate to say this, doesn't have that much to offer and actually doesn't have a high potential. So let's say, for example, Miwa's maximum potential, if she were to train for 20, 30 years, was at the absolute peak, just the super high grade one. Her using that Binding Vow may have actually taken her swing to be probably the peak of grade one, like it may have been stronger than anything even now Beto could offer in terms of just damage, but of course, that's all she could offer. If you were to put that in the hands of any sort of special grade sorcerer, or even Yuji who has special grade potential or Yuta, if they were to make that binding vow where they'd never pick up a katana again, then that swing would have sliced through Kenjaku like it was butter, because it depends on who's using the binding vow. And it goes back to this whole point of Sukuna using this binding vow in the moment to actually fire off the world ending slash. If Sukuna was able to do that in the moment, and we've seen other characters can do that such as Miwa and Akari, why can't Gojo make a binding vow to actually resurrect himself? Why can't he do that? The answer is there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to, and we know that Gojo was actually alive for some period of time after he was cut in half. Even after he went to the afterlife, he actually came back to the present day and opened his eyes and he even smiled when Sukuna said, oh, you were magnificent. I'll never forget you for as long as you live. So he was alive for some period of time and he actually may have made a binding vow to sacrifice something to actually resurrect him and bring him back to life. And it may not have been as soon as the fight ended, it could have been later. And this could also be another reference to Hunter x Hunter with Hisoka with very brief Hunter x Hunter manga spoilers. So if you don't want to see that, skip like 10 seconds ahead. But when Hisoka actually died against Krolo, he made a forced imposed contract on himself to actually resurrect himself from death after the fight was done and that actually took place a bit after the fight was over. This could be the same thing with Satoru Gojo, where just like Sukuna can make a last minute binding vow to quickly win, Gojo can make a last minute binding vow to actually resurrect himself later on in the binding vow, we could just be seeing its effects take place now. And what could this binding vow be? Well, it may be the perhaps the loss of his six eyes, which may be the reason why his eyes had such heavy emphasis on it with there being such impact lines. That could be his eyes opening and him losing the six eyes, which is why Gigi's putting so much highlight on his eye in that moment, and that could actually make sense. You are offering away the six eyes, one of the strongest abilities, if not the strongest ability, and the only reason Gojo can actually even use Jujutsu to such an extent that he can actually control the Limitless like that. These six eyes, if he loses that, he is not going to be nearly as strong as he was. I mean, if he actually loses the six eyes, he probably wouldn't even be as strong as Yuta or Kari, because then he wouldn't be able to control the Limitless as properly. He'd lose all of the buffs that he gets, such as Infinite Cursed Energy. He'd lose the ability to see everything he sees with the six eyes, but the most important thing is to manipulate the Limitless properly because even Sukuna said it doesn't even matter if Yuta can actually copy the Limitless. If you don't have the six eyes, you won't be able to use it or control it properly, which is why Yuta never pulled out a red or blue. Gojo probably would lose the ability to actually use his technique properly, but it could be possible because Gojo's had the six eyes for so long. Even if he actually loses the ability to see it, he may just have such muscle memory or such an understanding of it that he may actually be able to still fire off red and blues. But of course, he would also lose the fact that he has an infinite cursed energy supply, so the Limitless would drain his cursed energy quickly. Again, he would not be nearly as strong as he was before. This would be a tremendous nerf, but it's the fact that he could come back and he may actually at least do something at the end. And it's just the fact that he's alive. The biggest reason people don't want Gojo to come back, and this is something that I've been saying for quite a long time, and it's the reason I said I don't want Gojo to come back is because I wanted the students to have that highlight. I wanted all the students to take on Sukuna and have their go. I thought after Gojo died, this was my big take. I don't want him to come back because that would ruin the story specifically because had he resurrected and he were to fight Sukuna again, then everyone loses their chance to fight Sukuna, but everyone's already had their chance to fight Sukuna. Everyone, literally everyone, bar Hakari, who's going extreme diff on the maiden in an off-screen fight, who's currently on the bench, bar him, everyone relevant and strong has actually fought Sukuna and had their go, even people who aren't that strong and random characters such as Kusakabe have had it. And not only that, but Gojo of this binding vow of losing the six eyes and of the new information that we have that you really do need the six eyes to control your limitless, which is something we already knew before, but it was nice to actually get proper confirmation in the actual story of it being said that Yuta wouldn't be able to use the limitless without the six eyes. Gojo would not be nearly as strong as he was before. So yes, the big issue that I have 
had from a writing point of view would be addressed and that was the whole reason I never wanted him to come back to begin with but now that we are 20 chapters since that moment and we've gotten everyone fighting Sukuna and he may come back weaker there is no reason why he shouldn't end you may argue and this is something I've argued in the past as well which is completely fair that Gojo coming back is bad writing because it would actually heavily impact that one chapter of 236 and make it not be nearly as good because if you look back on that chapter of Gojo being alive it's not going to hit nearly as hard of him being alive and that's fair criticism I have nothing to say against that that is completely valid and I do think it would actually impact the whole Gojo being in the afterlife moment but you could argue because there's actually some foreshadowing in that very same time when he's in the afterlife of him actually coming back that it wouldn't impact it too much and it would still be as sweet because the whole point of it is is that he gets to talk to Geto so it would be nice if he resurrects and he still got that afterlife talk it would be similar to how when Kakashi actually died against Pain he got to talk to his father in the afterlife which is all nice and good but then he got to come back it's not like it took away from Kakashi's talk of his dad in the afterlife so you could argue the very same with Gojo and Geto in the same it wouldn't change how good that chapter is so I can see arguments being made for both cases and to be honest I lie somewhere in the middle but being genuine I probably lean more towards it wouldn't hurt it that much obviously given the new context that we have 20 chapters after it's come out so my opinion has actually changed quite a bit on it and another point is this isn't one piece or fairy tale where characters never die or there's so many fake out deaths where it goes to a point of just being utter annoyance and I'm not saying those are bad series those are actually two of my all-time favorite series but JJK has the opposite issue where it kills people too much it kills people to such a disgusting rate that someone actually coming back from the dead would not be frowned upon by the community but would actually be praised because so many people die and so little people ever come back if ever beside Yuji so that's why I think Gojo Satoru may come back and it would be an insane revival if he does but if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like it helps out a ton thank you and of course if you haven't already be sure to subscribe for a ton of consistent and quality JJK content just like this less than 10% of people actually watch my videos are subscribed so if you love JJK I promise you you won't regret subscribing and of course thank you to all the channel members as well it is always much appreciated guys that's all from me have a great day and take care